Okay, good. Because I don't hear the echo now. Okay. So, all right. Uh, you about ready to start? I'm ready. All right, cool. So we're going to do a little bit of this. We're going to go five, four, three, two, one. Hey, everybody. It's James Powell and Jason Jensen. Welcome to the crazy Double J's podcast that's supposed to be monthly, but somehow turned into a... Um, this is now two months since we've had our last podcast, but uh, here we are. Uh, <laughs> Hello, I got, everyone. I got Jason Jensen here. Uh, if you hear a little bit of echoing, it's because my garage door is shut. There's always some issue with my garage. I don't know what it is, but there's always something. It can never be perfect. But yeah, Well, it's so not I'm, bad. It's not I'm, I'm kind of like in a giant echo chamber right now. Yeah. But so, guys, hey, it is uh, sometime in the year of 2021, and uh, <laughs> I... Uh, I added a new rack behind me the other day because I had Sweet. to get more space on my bench and I have to set up a little uh, photography area for some articles uh, I'm going to be writing. And um, we'll nice. talk about that in a little bit. But Jason and I are, are getting involved in a uh, kind of a get outside of your box little project, <laughs> I think you could call it. It really is. Uh, it's, it's new for me. It's a first for me, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, that's kind of what we're going to talk about is getting outside of that model building comfort zone. You know, we're uh, people watching this are model railroad type people, craftsman structure type people. For those of you that don't know, craftsman structures are kind of uh, <laughs> wooden model railroad kits and uh, they're made to simulate usually buildings or boats, something like that. Um, and uh, they use real wood instead of plastic. So there's a lot of us model builders, uh, model railroaders that use wood and not uh, not injection molded or resin poured kits. And uh, I don't know if we're, I, I, it used to be that we had to be a little bit more talented. I don't know if we have to be now. I think we just like cutting wood. No, they I make guess. it, they make it pretty simple now to yeah. do wood kits. It's, uh, it's, it's not, not as hard as, it used it's to, not all just a box of sticks. No, no, it's not. So, um, so we're kind of sorry. Oh, look, Christmas Starbucks. Nice. Yay! Whoa, awesome. Christmas Starbucks. So, uh, yeah, it's in. It's we're November right, right before Thanksgiving right now. Recording this, but uh, yeah. So we are used to building. Uh, these craftsman kits out of boxes. Um, I don't really build nearly as many kits as Jason. I scratch build a lot of stuff um, where I just take regular old wood, um, strip wood, sheet wood, whatever, and I cut it up and make things. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's it got its pluses and it's got its minuses. It's a little bit slower than building with kits. Um, wow. <laughs> Was that me? That that was you. Wow. I just had a dog bark and a door slam all at the same time. Must have been from over there. <laughs> Who knows? You know, Jason and I just had like an hour long trying to get our Zoom meeting. <laughs> trying work. to get the audio to we work. Couldn't, we didn't have any audio at all. We couldn't figure out. First, first he could hear me and then he couldn't hear me. And then we removed the computers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, finally worked. Crazy. So, um, yeah. So, I don't know. Ghosts, whatever. Uh, my daughters, I think they're they're going out to the park <laughs> and they were going to come through here, but I guess they just So basically, I think we're talking about trying different scales. Yeah. Yeah. Or just just different model building techniques. Yeah. Um, uh, not, you know, what we're going to talk about right now. Uh, do you have yours? Look, well, I'll just introduce it. This isn't where we're going to talk about the second, but um, there we go. Check that out. Let me let me show mine while yours is there. So we are going to talk about these uh, ammo Panzer One Breda kits that uh, Ammo sent us, and Jason and I are going to each attempt to build yes. one of these in one thirty fifth scale. Yeah. Oh, um, well, I'll tell you, I actually started mine this weekend. I knew you were gonna. <laughs> Do that, <laughs> man! I opened the box and I looked at the parts. That's yeah. that's it. All right, so I built a few military models before, but I'm gonna let you take it off, Jason, because uh, I know man. you haven't. So, yeah, roll with it. I have nothing to compare it to, but the detail in these parts is incredible. It's just mind blowing. 
um, I'm hooked. Oh. <laughs> I really am. Because, uh, you know, working in HO scale, I love all the detail. Yep. In this, oh my gosh, every little single detail is there. I mean, you got the welds. Like yeah. Joint it, welds like are modeled literally like yep. you can see the little overlapping beads in a weld. It, it's incredible. It yeah. really is. Yeah. It's um, um, and so the instructions too are just amazing. Uh, right. I've had no trouble at all. It's not like I'm having to guess where parts go. No, it's all drawn out for you in, in detail. Yeah. So, um, so we did, we just got these kits, right. And it's kind of cool. Mig Jimenez autographed them for us, which is yeah. pretty, pretty neat. Very um, cool. Yeah. So he's the, if, if you don't know, he's the founder of ammo. And now I'm using the ammo, um, extra fine cement. Yeah. My, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Right. So I'm going to just for the heck of it, I'm just going to show normal sprue set, right. Um, that you would find on yep. most kits. But the fact of the matter is the detail is out of this world. I mean, I mean, there's little handles that you can glue on the hatches. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's and incredible. That, and that's pretty common with the, with the higher end, okay. like a TACOM or Dragon. Uh, there's so many, a Meng, there's these kit companies that have, they just, my God, it's, it's insane. Like we don't yeah. really see it in model railroading so much. Uh -huh. Maybe a little bit in the bigger scales, but there, there, there's not a big enough market model railroading where there's tons of injection molded type kits, right? Yeah, you yeah. got you got HO scale structures, you got cement scale structures, but these these being able to blow up the scales one thirty fifth, you know, it's it's yeah. bigger it's bigger than O scale, right? Uh, and the detail you can get with this stuff is phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal. Yep. I'm a little jealous that you started on yours. I was going to start on mine, <laughs> um, but uh, I I had this little section on the layout that I, I wanted to get done. So I'm kind of trying to push to get it done. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. What's what I'm doing with it's the layout. It's so, so different. It's so different because uh, I built models when I was a kid, oh, even yeah. a teenager, plastic oh. cars, trucks, whatever. But this is different. It, it just is. Um, you're not using the goopy testers glue. <laughs> Which is unusable for anything except sniffing. I just don't, I, right. that, I mean, really, yeah. I mean, I've heard so many people say that, and I guess people use it, but man, they still sell that stuff. And that is, yeah. oh God, I remember like being in my, like when I was, before I was really even model railroading, you know, probably yeah. like, or something trying to put together some like Ravel kits or something like that. Yep. And that, oh my God, that stuff smelled so well, it smelled bad. You well, know, for, of for people listening that don't know, um, ammo sells a liquid cement. Yeah. And it actually, the brush is on the cap and the brush is super fine. Yep. So you just dip it in and then you run that brush along the seam and it just ever so slightly melts the plastic yeah. and welds it together. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a solvent and man, yeah. it just, it creates a, a, you know, it melts it plastic, but creates a physical bond. You know, they actually melt it a little bit yeah. and uh, well, it's pretty damn good stuff. There's a lot of them out yep. there. I mean, there's people that even use acetone. Um, there's, there's a lot of different things you can use, but mm -hmm. you know, having that nice little micro fine brush, you can just barely yeah. really run it. You know, we're yep. so used to at least, at least me, when I'm doing my wood stuff, you know, I'm using like carpenter's glue and, you know, <laughs> little CA. And if I get too much, I just kind of cover it up and dull it out a little bit. But this stuff, when you're making these military models, that they're so, the, the scale is, is so large and the details are so fine. Yeah. You can't let, you can't have glue. You yep. cannot show glue. That's, that's just, that's one of the number one no-nos, you know, <laughs> yeah. you got to take all your parts off the sprue. You know, yep. which is something that you've done somewhat, but we don't do it. I mean, we cut the wood kits off, you know, with yeah. exacto knives, but we don't usually have to cut injection molded pieces off sprues. No, and I recommend that you use a brand new blade. I oh, mean, man. as sharp as possible. <laughs> oh, you know what I did? Look what I did. This is kind of cool. Um, I went on Amazon. There is a pack of 300 number 11 blades and it was like 
It's like 10 bucks. Right. Wow, cool. I was going down to the local hardware store. Not not that I don't like supporting the local hardware store. It's a little true value and it's awesome. It's two blocks uh-huh. away and they got they have more than you could ever imagine for such a small store. So I go there a lot. But I would buy a little, you know, five pack of uh, they were Stanley blades. They're number 11s, you know. They they're uh-huh. really good sharp. Uh, these aren't quite as sharp. But man, you can change them out like every hour. <laughs> it's, yeah, no, exactly. they, they, they are sharp when they start, but they dull really fast. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, a little little pack, and uh, it's going to last a long time, and it was cool. only a few bucks. So, yeah. But that's one thing with those plastic kits. Another thing is is that that styrene they use in the kits is so easy to cut. You know, oh, it's like yeah. as Super long as you see the cut. Oh my god! As long as your blade sharp, you can just run it right along there, and it curls. Up. It's yep. beautiful stuff. That and then a really good pair of tweezers with a nice point. Yep. Uh, yep. Very important. Now, do you use the tweezers that you have to close shut, or the ones that you have to push to open? You no, know, the ones that are like spring loaded. Yeah, I just use the ones that regular tweezers. Yeah, regular tweezers. Yeah, that but, that. But uh, they're long, and they it comes to a a point, a real fine point. Right, right. When you with with the plastic kit, I remember back in the days on PBS, there was a there was a show that was produced by a Fine Scale Modeler. It was a it was a sponsored by Fine Scale Modeler. It was a, it was a like a Combox sponsored show, and they would show. I can't remember what it's called, but they would show how to make like plastic kits or how to put together plastic kits and things like that. Okay. And he always talked about, you make sure you take your kit out and you uh, wash it with detergent to get any mold release off of it. And um, I don't, I don't ever do that anymore. No. Like I did used to, no. um, but I know some people swear by it. Like you have to do yeah. that. You don't have, but I, there's um, ammo has a, let me see. This is, this is, I don't, do you have any of this? It's a ammo primer? One, one shot primer. Yeah, I don't. It's, it's ba- basically Badger makes a, a product called Steinal Res. It's a, okay. uh, it's a primer and it is knock your socks off good, right? This is that same thing repackaged. You know, they okay. really ammo will even say they repackage this for the kind of like the rest of the world, you know, okay. outside of the U.S. So this uh, this primer here is amazing through an airbrush. It's even great through a, a, I put it, I just, today I was putting, painting it on uh, um, 3D printed parts. It worked uh-huh. perfectly. Put them on resin 3D printed parts, uh, FDM 3D printed parts. Cool. And so this stuff, I, what what are you priming yours with? Are you just using rattle can or, or what are you uh, using? Um, I'm, I'm probably going to have to get some. I'm just going to have to buy some primer that I'll run through my airbrush. Oh, okay. So you've only just taken the kit out and, and kind of started uh, gluing yeah. it together and whatnot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one thing that we, we see differently with military models uh, than model railroad stuff mm-hmm. is that you can assemble a lot of it and then paint it, which is oh, so crazy. Yeah. Which yeah. is so, we're so used to like painting everything, you know, or <laughs> painting walls yeah. and then putting it together. Yep. Whereas with like a lot of this military stuff, the factories, they would, they would assemble these tanks or these pieces of armor or whatever. Then they paint them all the same color, right? Yeah. The whole thing's yep. the same color. Now, yeah. these are from the Spanish Civil War, right? So uh-huh. like 1936. Yep. 30, 32, 35. Yeah, somewhere in there. Like, yeah. So there, there's a picture of the tank, right? Yeah. Um, it's a really cool looking tank. And I'm not a military guy. Yeah. Oh, and it's and neither the, am I. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Okay. So here's the thing. There was two sides. There was the, uh, what they call the nationalists. And then I think there was like the Republicans. Okay. Uh-huh. And the nationalists, which is what I actually have the shirt on. Look at this. Look at that. Oh yeah. Look, yeah. At, that. Look at that. There that is go. the Spanish Legion shirt. But cool. But I have to say, you know, and, and this has always been a thing for military modelers. These guys, that that ran these tanks they were supported in part by the nazis so (laughs) kind of like "Eh," but you know what it's history right so and then and then there were the other guys that were supported by the soviet union 
Yes. So you had one side, it's kind of like World War II, you know, there's one side supported, but it was pretty much Soviet Union versus the Nazis. And it was, uh, you know, Spain yeah. and Portugal and it, it, yeah. it was, Mexico was involved and France. So, but uh, these tanks, they, you, now you were talking about, they, this came in like a, uh, like the, they show here, like a camo scheme, right? Yeah. Um, a camo paint scheme. Now you're, you're planning on doing like a. I'm doing like a desert tan. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know if it ever, if that tank ever was painted in a desert tan, but yeah. I just uh, feel like that's the look I want to go for. And I no, I agree. I, um, I don't know how to paint camo. I've never painted camo in my yeah. life that I can think of. I painted, you know, like olive drabs or like, yep. but I don't think I've ever painted camo. Ammo has some really cool stuff. Camo putty, which is really cool. It's like a masking putty. Yep, to make, make yep. Random camo. Um, I I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh -huh. um, I kind of want to, you know, obviously we're model railroaders, right? Ammo sent these things to us. They know we're not military modelers. They totally <laughs> understand that. They're like, oh, wow, you guys are going to win the, you know, international IPMS competition. <laughs> you know that. They just want to see what we think of them, right? Yeah. So, um, it is definitely stepping a bit out of what we do normally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, well, I, and I, I am completely doing a YouTube video for my channel on this. <laughs> it's it, that's awesome. I think, and I think it's going to be a big the point. Deal. The point is I think to show people that um, you can do a different scale, a different technique uh, just by, watching other videos i mean i'm just basically watching the ammo videos that are on their youtube channel um yeah. learning exactly how to use the product on these on this tank and so i like if i can do it anyone can do no, it no <laughs> i you, you, one thing i i will say that you know that a while back uh todd wiley um uh -huh. from um well uh, they used to have podcasts, but the, the yeah. Wileys, yeah. you know, HO Scale like, Customs. HO Scale yeah. Customs. The, whoever does Craftsman Kits and HO Scale yep. knows who they are, right? Yeah. Um, Todd started, he, well, he did a, uh, but, I think, a but, 135th Sherman tank, right? Yeah, uh, a tank, and then he did a diorama, and so. Yeah, so he did one of the Foscale, uh, Foscale, who, or, or Doug Fiscali, who yeah. owns Foscale models. He also makes 135th scale yes. military diorama kits yep. for yep. so that's not just trains he does he does these military diorama kits too yeah yeah he, he actually has four kits available that that's and they're oh. awesome they're yeah gorgeous yep. kits i mean yeah uh the one that um todd did was a, a theater and uh -huh. um it was beautiful uh yeah. so so he and he put all kinds of extra detail into it mm -hmm. uh but what he found was at first he was like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, you know, and then he then he started really getting into it because he was learning how like doing mud splatter and all these little things that are just a little, usually a little bit too detailed for model uh -huh. writing, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, there's like literally product that you you can splat onto these kits that make it look like they've just ran through the mud. And there's yeah. wet mud and there's dry mud and, and there's all kinds of things like that. So it's really fun. You can really get in and explore even scenery products that, that yeah. you can make look, you know, dead on photorealistic. Um, but he was, I think he was building a Tamiya kit, right? And I will say one yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've built enough Tamiya stuff. Yeah. Um, and building a Tamiya kit versus building one of these ammo kits or like say Dragon or Mang or somebody like that. Uh huh. Night and day. Okay. If he built one of these, he would be blown away. Yeah. We're talking the detail on these kits compared to Tamiya. Tamiya is kind of like mass market. You know, okay. They're, okay. They're, their figures are kind of like, meh. I mean, they're yeah. state. Everybody has them. But if you're doing like the really high end stuff, it's not, you know, they, they, get, they get ragged on a lot. Okay. Um, but they've been around forever. Yeah, they've been yeah. using the same kits forever. But yeah. the quality difference is okay, unbelievably different. These things are really nice kits. Um, you look at their stuff, and it's like, you know, I haven't. I don't. Do they have new kits? I don't know. But yeah, I know I that I when know. I was a little kid, they had the exact same stuff they have now. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> yep. um, 
Yeah. So it'd be like, you know, putting together a, a Varney paper sided car now and saying uh-huh. it looks great, you know, it's, it, you know, or <laughs> yeah. like early Athern blue box stuff or something uh-huh. like that. Uh, but I, uh, I can't wait. I looked at the details on this and it's yeah, incredible. Phenomenal. I, I think yeah. it, you, so you've only started to kind of assemble pieces, right? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm maybe, I don't even know. I'm close to a third of the way done with it. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So, so I mean, yeah. that, you made some good progress on it, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, and here we're looking at it going, this thing's awesome. Yeah. Military modelers would be like, nope, I'm going to replace all these things with laser parts. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're, they're literally, you know, a, a guy I work with at the shop, his name's John Fields. And he's a 135th modeler. And he's going in and he gets, he's like, oh, I've got an order from this guy in Russia. And he is, you know, machining these little <laughs> 135th, you know, 50, 50 millimeter barrels that are hollow on the inside. And they have to, it is crazy crazy the yeah. detail of these yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. But there's a, I mean, it, the, the, I would say the market for military models is so much bigger than model railroading. Uh, that, oh, sure. What, what, Definitely. what we see Definitely. is like in model railroading is we're not even, there's millions yeah. of people that do military models. You yeah. know, there might be in the world, there might be a half a million that do model railroading, railroading if that, you know, yeah. so. And, um, and, and I think for all of our listeners, the most important thing is w- when you try other types of modeling or other scales, you always walk away learning something. Yeah, yeah, totally. You you can it's always incredible. learn something that you can bring back to model railroading. Yes. You know, it yep. has been my goal for a very long time to be able to introduce techniques that are used in these bigger hobbies that are mm-hmm. used in sk- things like things like military modeling and bring yeah. them into the model railroading world. Yep. Because I've said before, I just said, well, you know, the, the use mud and you don't usually use it in such a small scale. You totally can. Yeah, it's totally. Just, it's like totally a little can. bit of a change of a technique, you yep. know, you totally can. I mean, how many people use wet effects in model railroading? But here I was yesterday making a retaining <laughs> wall using yep. wet effects to make make that retaining wall look like it's damp and oh, moldy, yeah. right? Yep. So, and I know you've used it a ton of times. Well, well, I think people are so quick to say, oh, well, that's not going to work in HO scale or that definitely won't work in N scale. And, it, and it's not true. And I think once you work in a bigger scale and you actually try the technique, you realize you're like, oh yeah, I actually can do this in a smaller scale. Sure, sure. I mean, yeah. think about like painting your HO scale figures, right? For yeah. instance, you're using paint and let's say you're using, first of all, I've done it before. I would never do it anymore, but I've used, I used craft paint back in the day to paint figures. I mean, I've used uh, this ammo stuff because it's, it's so much finer, but whether oh, you're using ammo yeah. or whatever, AK or you're using, you know, Vallejo or whatever, it, it's yep. so much it's so much more saturated, but it's so much finer. It goes on so much better, especially if you're using high quality uh, figures, yeah. like 3D printed figures yep. or like the really nice prizer figures. Um, I just painted a bunch of old school model power figures, which are hideous, <laughs> but they're in the background. So I don't really care. <laughs> okay. right? But, you know, there's things used for military modelers. There's, there's literally figure paint retarder that you can mix with your paint. Mm-hmm. So your paint doesn't dry out so fast because yeah. you, you ha- you're you using this little bitty brush to paint figures. Yep. And so your paint, even, even if it's warm out at, at all, your paint's going to dry up really quick in your brush. But if you put yeah. a little bit of this retarder in and you mix it in, your paint stays wet for a long time. It's almost yep. like using a wet palette, right? Yeah. But what what's also nice and really the reason they make it is so you can mix colors. And we don't have to worry about that too much in H2 yeah. scale. But when you start getting up into the S's, the O's, you could start doing things like highlights on pants or shirts or, you know, uh, on the faces, uh, you know, with the flesh color. You can, yeah. you can do that. HO is pretty small, but, you know, if you really get into it, you can totally do it. Uh, oh, you, know? you totally can. Um, you totally can. Except it's I think, such a... I think using the right product, I mean, using ammo, it, it sets you up to succeed. Where I think in the past, just speaking for myself, you know, I would try to thin paint thin acrylics and i would simply add water to it yeah. well that that <laughs> it doesn't work well it, it, it thins it it, it, it thins, thins it because it it, it will uh 
but it also thins out the pigment. You know, yep. it makes it, it, yeah. it doesn't always, I used to use Windex. You're pigment. changing the paint when you, when you're doing that, where right. the, the ammo stuff is. Well, it's, it's thinner made for acrylic. It's yes. acrylic yep. thinner. Yeah. Right. And I'm not, you know, we're not here, you know, we keep talking about ammo. We're not here trying to do a commercial for ammo, even no. though we love ammo, you know, yeah. but what we're trying to do is talk about how we can improve the quality of what you're doing, the modeling. If you really yes. want to get better, if you really exactly. want to bring it to the next level, listen, and yep. once again, I'm going to reach behind me, but here's something that is not ammo at all, but <laughs> I am swearing by, which is Vitero stain. Yes. Um, uh, Vitero solution stains. Brian Bollinger makes this with, with best. And this stuff is freaking amazing. It's incredible. Okay. It, it really is. is. It, it's no joke. It is incredible. Yep. You can put this aged barn wood on a piece of basswood. And as long as you don't have any glue or, you know, you got little sealed areas with glue, that stuff by itself will look like old wood. It will look just like old wood. And then you start yeah. combining it with this colors like raw umber or uh, what's, what's, what's the other one? Like uh, what's the other brown? He's got like the Mur murky, murky brown, brown. <laughs> murky brown. Yep. You know, I, I, everybody knows I love putting moss on the bottoms of my buildings. Yeah. You know, Ivy green. Perfect yep. for it's that. It's perfect. You yeah. know, just a little bit. So now I'm using like ammo products, like oil brushers, uh, the shaders, the greens, and now I'm using this. So it's giving me all these really cool blending yeah. greens. And I'll tell you, you guys, if you haven't, and this is a commercial because I love it so much. <laughs> if you haven't tried Vitero Solutions stuff, look it up and get it. it, it it's is, incredible. Yep. It is so worth it. This, I've used the heck out of this bottle and you can see that I've it only- It goes used, a long way. It goes a long way. Um, yeah. I was really, really, really preaching how great the, uh, uh, oh my God, it's not CC Crow, the uh, Builders and Scale uh, oh, Silverwood yeah, yeah. is, which I love, uh -huh. but putting them side to side, not even close. Not, yeah. it is, blows me away how good that stuff is. He said he spent a ton of time really researching it. He obviously did. It's not. I like feel like with with other wood stains from other companies, you have to put so many layers on to get the effect that you're after. Where this, or straight out of the bottle, one time, one brush time. it on, and you've got the effect that you want. Well, you know, and the other stains seem to me to also be either either really light with the pigment that they're using, and I don't honestly don't know what they use to. Uh, you know, to, to color it. Yeah. Um, I don't want to ask, I would love to know, but I don't <laughs> want to ask. Um, but, or it almost seems like, uh, I don't want to say like paint, but it, it's got like of a oily kind of feel to it. Uh -huh. Whereas this stuff, man, it dries dead flat. It like, yeah. it stays yep. now, it stays kind of wet looking for a while, but once it's dry, it looks real. It yeah. is freaking amazing. Yep. And uh, I just pulled out today for the heck of it. I was using uh, the barn red. Oh, uh -huh. uh, and I was uh, actually taking a tarp and I was making it like a, like an old tarp and God, the color of that thing straight out of the bottle. It doesn't look like barn red. It looks like this, like kind of blood color, but man, when it dries. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, and it's so I, fun to play with them and mix colors or, kind of do a light wash where it fades from one into another, into another. And yeah yeah, it, yeah yeah the the uh um so now obviously these stains for the most part were made for model railroading which is cool specifically yeah. something made for model railroading something that yep. ammo doesn't have this yeah. type of stuff but um uh, you know i think that's where other hobbies could learn from some of the stuff we have <laughs> if they're sure. doing dioramas and they get yeah. this stuff, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be blown away. Now, yeah. if you take this stuff and you mix it with some pigments or like some uh, pan pastels, yeah, bring it to another level. I mean, yep, really, really, <laughs> yep. really cool stuff. So, um, back to the military stuff, though. I I think that being able to try to um, first of all see what steps are that 
we we use or that we follow to build an armor kit, right? Um, there's a lot of videos out there, tons of videos. YouTube, oh, tons. Of, tons. On weathering, right? Yep. And there's also a lot of videos on just painting, right? Because yeah. that's something being that we don't do that. That's kind of, we need to, we need to know how to do it. You know, everybody, everybody uses airbrush, right? Yeah. Nobody hand paints military models. You use brushes <laughs> yeah. for weathering, yes. of course, but you airbrush because yep. you want it to look like it was like it was sprayed on, like they really yeah. did, you know? Yep. Maybe you might use a brush for like buildings or things like that, that we do in model railroading. Um, but one thing I found out, and I could be totally wrong with this, is it seems like it goes really fast. Oh, like, yeah. Once you start putting the model together and you paint it, it's like all of a sudden you're like, holy crap, <laughs> that yeah. didn't take that yes. long. Yeah. You know, now, obviously, there's guys out there, once again, they're putting on the, the details to the nth degree. Fantastic. Sure. But, the, but for model railroaders, just the early, just just completing it and painting it, and it's looking awesome before you ever do any weathering it, or any chipping it or anything. Can go, it can go really fast. Yeah. It can. And I think it comes to using the correct um, tools. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, um, in, uh, investing in brushes, investing in a decent airbrush, in, yes. in, you know, the different enamel washes and or the acrylic washes now which yeah is yeah so yep uh yeah so it's it, just investing in in your own hobby to make your stuff look to take it to the next level what, one thing that a lot of people i've heard say is they're like uh you know using weathering products they smell you know they, they and first yeah. of all they do have they do have a smell the thinner yep. doesn't smell like anything but now they're coming out with all these acrylic products acrylic yes. washes which are yep. unbelievably good yeah. they look just as good uh, or let's say pretty darn close yep the, to, the filters the shaders oh shaders yeah oh yeah. my god you know those, <laughs> yeah. those three things the shaders the shaders the filters and the washes yeah they they are like a game changer because now it's all water-based right? yeah. and it's it's fantastic stuff here's another thing this is a Marta Kalinsky brush. If you haven't used a Kalinsky brush, and there's a lot of manufacturers that have Kalinsky brushes, ammos are Marta Kalinsky brushes. They're awesome. They yep. are just so high end. I mean, you got to take care of them though. These are not cheap. You do. You these do. are these are not cheap. We're talking. Yep. You know, it could be. 20 bucks for a brush. It could be 15, yeah. 10. Um, this is a number one, but they're so fine. They take the paint so beautifully. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm a, like I always say, I use optimizers and you just watch that paint just go up in the bristles and it just stops right at the right place. And yeah. it just flows out it, beautifully. It, it, and, uh, so <laughs> nice. So they are nice. awesome. They, they are, are, but like you said, you have to take care of them. You have and, to take care of them. You know, I always tell people, I've said this on my YouTube channel, there is no reason to dip your brush so far in the paint where you're getting paint up on the silver. Yeah, on the, on you, the what's that called, bezel? Uh, the ferrule. Ferrule, yeah. Okay. Ferrule, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's no reason for that. Uh, really, only half of your bristles should be covered in paint. Right. Yeah. The, the taper basically for most brushes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, if you're putting it that far in your paint, first because of all, you're what? never going to get that stuff out. Right. No, because that paint gets up in the bristles that are in the ferrule right. and yeah. it dries. And what it's doing is it's spreading the bristles. Right. Yeah. So, your, so brush, your bristles are going out like this rather yep, than being nice and, and tight. And it, so after that dries, it loses the shape. You'll never get it back. Yeah, never. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, there's, there's products out there specifically for maintaining the shape of your brush for conditioning yeah. your brushes. Yep. And, and this is for the most part when you're, when you're using brushes that are made for small stuff, you know, really small, oh, sure. Figure painting, uh, weathering brushes when you're going for little, little streaks and things like that. Um, 
you know, you get bigger brushes, man. I got one. I, got, I don't even care. I just throw oh, them in yeah, water and definitely. they're nasty. Cause then I use them once they get super yeah. nasty. I use them for weathering too. Right. Uh, but, Cause you can go to like Michael's craft store and buy a bag of 10 for cheap and yeah, you're yeah. okay with them. <laughs> yeah. I, I got a Hobby Lobby set over here. They're, they're yeah. fine, but you know, if yeah. I destroy them, I don't care, but yep. those, those higher end brushes, you know, you really, you do got to take care of them and you got to yeah. make sure they're cleaned out and yep. you, you don't dip them all the way into your yeah. paint. And that's, that's one thing with, you know, with craft paints, with these, with these, uh, these type of hobby paints, the, the weathering paints or whatever, for the most part, they all come in little squeeze bottles. You put them out on a little pallet. It's yep. not like the old school testers where it's a bottle and <laughs> you know, you stick your brush in there, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. But, um, now what do you think when you, when you make your, uh, going back to the military model, the, uh, sure. the Panzer, the Panther, yeah. um, are you going to put that on a diorama or are you just going to just, put I am going to put up? it on a diorama and okay. I might even, um, I'll probably end up doing one of the FOSS, uh, <laughs> diorama backgrounds, but, but I, I, I want it to look like it's set in Spain. Yeah. Yeah. And that it's, it's gotta look like it's Spain, right? Is that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, so, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of contemplating if I want to do it like burned out or if I want to actually make sure uh, make it like it's being used. I don't uh -huh. know yet. Um, yeah, I, I, I like burned out stuff and rusty stuff. Yep. Go figure. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. I mean, there's it's so interesting, many... right? Because it's all, it's brand new for us. Um, we're switching scales and yeah, it's kind of just, see how it goes <laughs> one thing I, I learned doing uh the sherman tanks is make sure you put the treads on right before you post them on social media <laughs> <laughs> don't have them reversed because you will hear lots and lots and lots of people make comments about how your treads are yeah. on the wrong way um <laughs> we talk about rivet counters in model railroading yeah. there's just as many if not more in military modeling they well, are... i'll be honest with you i've been so nervous about starting this project just oh, because we're gonna get i don't killed. know i don't know anything about yeah yeah this stuff we're, we're um, gonna get killed there, I, there's no doubt about it they're, they're, they're i just want it to look cool but yeah. in someone else's eyes it may be totally wrong oh man <laughs> so, when, when i, I built that know. When I built that that first Sherman, I thought, man, this thing looked cool, man. I really like it. I really dig it. People are like, what is that you mean? <laughs> yeah. You did it wrong. But again, know. like I just said, um, you just, you learn. Yeah. You learn so much. Of course. From every project. No, uh, I, and then working in different scales, you know, uh, most of the listeners know I do sci-fi modeling, right. which is one eighteenth scale right and what's great is i never get burned out as soon as i get tired of ho scale yep. then i switch to the sci-fi or if i get tired of that now i can switch to military modeling right so right um so now really for the first time i feel like i am constantly modeling yes because i'm that's not getting burned out burned where, out on it you know, with HO scale a long time ago, I'd be like, ah, oh, I'm tired of this. I need to take, I would take a week, two weeks, yep. three weeks, yep. you know, then it's hard to get back into it. Where sure. if you switch and do say sci-fi modeling, um, after a little while, you're going to get a little tired of it. Or while you're working on the sci-fi modeling, you're thinking about your next project your next project yeah sure sure HO scale. so then you can just switch back to it and you'll find that you're just so so much more creative when, mm -hmm. when you're working in different scales uh and trying new techniques yeah it I, I i think that there's a couple things to be said about that not only does your brain have to work differently because yeah. you're doing yeah but you're also, and I've talked about this before, you're taking yourself purposely out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You're making it difficult for yourself, which is actually going to make you a better modeler because you're going to learn a bunch of things. Yeah. Um, you certainly can't go into building a 135th scale plastic Spanish Civil War tank kit <laughs> with the... Uh, mindset of I'm making a HO scale model railroad uh, building. Yeah. 
you you can't no. you can't no. because it's no. gonna look like crap right yeah um yeah not to say that it won't because it may i mean i might just <laughs> i might i may make it horrible but um there's something to be said about art and artists and that this is kind of i don't know it's kind of, I mean, people are gonna be like mm. but there's something to be said about uh a difficulty or a yeah. stress uh, and generally those things in art will produce better product uh -huh. than if it's just like your factory and it's always just flowing yep. out right yeah you got to give a little bit of that that difficulty yeah um and that's how not only do you grow in it but the that really that creativity really starts coming out and yep. um i think that's super important i think it's uh -huh. really really important um, oh yeah I you know, for example, there's um, this is a little bit off topic, but uh, um, there's bands where a singer or let's say even a drummer, uh -huh. they go and they play with other groups. They're on other albums and it's a totally different experience for them. And they learn. That's how they sure. grow. Sure. Um, recording sure. with in other studios with other people. Yep. Uh, and it's the same with modeling. You can't just stay uh stuck in a rut sort of you know, right and just doing the same thing over and over yeah i uh, mean you you want to challenge yourself you don't want to like yeah you don't want to back off you know if you if you're a what would i say somewhat of an accomplished modeler you don't want to back off and go work with a bunch of dudes that are just starting their first you know train set layout at some club <laughs> yeah. or something you know that that's not what we're talking about it's more like uh you know, um, you, you got you got to find that kind of level and and switch over to that. Maybe yeah. I don't know. I mean, you get people like uh, Celios, who's been doing the same. I don't want to say True. the same stuff. He's been doing similar stuff for forty years, yeah. right? Sure. Oh, more than four year, forty years. Sure, but his layout is let's say it's forty years old. Yep. Oh yeah. But he did start with these big, huge buildings and then he kind of pulled back uh -huh. and, and tore a lot of them down and built wood structures. Um, it's um, a lot of people like it. Some people like me kind of, I'm sure there was that, growth with George yeah, that we sure. don't even know about. Oh my God. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, but yep. you know, he's, he's an exception to the rule as we all know. <laughs> yes. Um, but you know, yep. I I would love to see you know where a furlough could could be right now, if he was you know still building yeah. models because yep. that's creativity to me. Yeah. Even though it's not something that a lot of people really liked, it's not prototypical. Yep. That's creativity. That well, is really there is nothing wrong with someone that even does end scale and that's all they're going to do, and they just continue doing the same thing over and over. I think for me. I always come at it from an artistic point of view and I'm always pushing myself to become a better artist. Yeah. It's I not mean, so much about the modeling for me. It's about becoming a better artist yeah. and, and how I can bring that artistic feel and creativity to the projects. Correct. I, I think yeah. there are many people that will always model in the same scale or yeah. the same location or the same era. And they love that and that's what they do and that's perfect i mean that yep. if that's what sure. they are they that awesome it, that's that's cool i think we're talking about trying to bring model railroading to a, a level that it really yeah uh, i mean there's and, and i'd really, like to really, challenge really, those people yeah, to yeah i try I, a different scale just for a small diorama because you'll be surprised how much you take away from it that you learn from that that then when you go back to what you're normally modeling, it, you just have a different perspective. Yeah, you really do. I agree. I, you know, I, like I was saying, and I didn't want to say that um, th there are modelers out there that are freaking phenomenal. I mean, yes. just my God. And I'm seeing more and more of it lately. There's this oh, new yeah. uh, 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 fine scale artists, railroad techniques group. <laughs> and there's some people yeah. popping up on there that I've never seen before. Yep. And their stuff is wow. Yeah. I mean, oh, really, really, really. It's good. so inspiring. Oh. It just I I see that stuff on 
Facebook and Instagram. Oh yep. my God, Instagram is just full of great artists. Yeah. And, and by the way, and- if you don't follow James Powell on Instagram, <laughs> why don't you do that? Because for some reason, I just sit there at the same amount of of people. I don't know why, um, but. Uh, <laughs> Facebook, no problem. I, that's growing, but I, I don't know. Instagram, yeah. for some reason, for me, is horrible. Um, but uh, yeah, I, that's that's the good thing about Instagram, man. There, it's just like I get I so it. inspired on Instagram. I really do. It's incredible. Yeah, there's, there's some really good stuff. Um, but I, I definitely think that stepping outside, doing something one thirty fifth military, really crazy. But yeah. at the same time really good um yep. yeah i think it's it's really fun i think it's going to be a great challenge we're by the way we're gonna you know jason's chron- chronicling his build he's gonna have a youtube video on it but we'll we'll do yep. a podcast once we go through all of it and we we talk about it um yeah. jason's gonna have to come up with a new logo though because he has a he has a sci-fi logo and he has a trains logo but he doesn't <laughs> have a military modeling logo. <laughs> right and calling it Jason Jensen Trains once again is a little odd, but that's okay. Um, but uh, I'll have to start doing one thirty fifth scale trains. Yeah, right. <laughs> flat cars that haul the tanks. You know, which is pretty cool because there are people that do uh, kind of, and I don't know what it is, but they do a lot of those military front line narrow gauge type modeling. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Sure. And it's really cool stuff, but it's yeah. not a scale that is standard military. Yeah. And it's not a scale that, you know, we, you know, there's not a whole lot there. There is 148th, but 135th is is definitely the main scale yeah. when it comes to yep. military modeling. And there's not people out there, I don't think, making, other than the military models, there's not 135th trains yeah. going on out there. So um, it's so funny that the, the military uh, companies chose 135th scale because all the kits that we built when we were young, the uh-huh. trucks and cars, I, what were they? Were like 120? Yeah, they were, I, I don't know, but the, all the car kits were bigger than that, way bigger than that. Yeah, um, so why didn't they go? I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, but like all those plastic car kits, they're all bigger. Were they 116th or something like that? I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, know true. what they're. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. But yeah. yeah, it's totally totally true that, you know, um, they just oh i got a phone ring in what is up with that so crazy. Oh, no, i know like they, they hey i'm doing a podcast over here um but i yeah i can't wait to uh it, it is fun doing the larger scale scenery too uh so the diorama yeah. part's yeah. really cool i i have done that i like it a yeah. lot it's very yeah. very fun um i can't i have to figure out where the battles were in spain so this is something that you know as model railroaders, yeah, we will will investigate like railroads or or like whatever ocean ports or things like that. Whereas in military modeling, there's so much history involved. Like, yeah, actually figuring out what battle and what time and who was in that battle and what equipment they used. Yep. And there's so many of them, right? Yeah. So you know, you really when you're doing that type of thing, you really want to be as accurate as possible. That's part yep. of military modeling is actually learning the history of what was going on Uh um, during that. But then again, there's also a lot of fantasy involved too. There's a lot of, a lot of modelers now that are doing things like uh, that kind of like, what if modeling where it's like, what if there were mechanized robots (laughs) during world war two, you know, or world war one and it's steampunky or, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that. And it's really popular. Um, it's incredible to see how um, creative people are just modeling. They're just starting to model. Yep. And yep. it's so cool to see this uh, all on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, because uh, really, even just a few years back, you weren't seeing that. That You know, it's interesting. We talk about that. Uh, last weekend, I was at a... Uh, a, at a, it's not a trade show. It was a, is a uh, art kind of based show in Los Angeles called Designer Con. It was at the uh, Anaheim Convention Center. So it was in An- Anaheim, not Los Angeles, but for most of the people out there in the, the country, they would consider that LA. Um, <laughs> anyway, they, uh, there was a gentleman that we shared our booth with. Um, his name is Chris Rayleigh, and he has an Instagram called Route Nine Signs. 
And he only started a couple of years ago. And so he's building these large scale signs. I would say they're probably kind of like, uh, oh, geez, how big would they be? Like 20 like, scale. Okay. Something they're like, like a foot tall, right? Oh, uh, at least. Or, uh, okay. so, or more or more. Or, okay. They're huge. Okay. I mean, they're like big. But yeah. he's replicating basically neon kind of sign like retro retro signs that yeah. that um were like along route 66 or you know at a lot of motel type signs uh you know the famous circus liquor sign from los angeles or you know a lot of uh las vegas type signs the welcome to las vegas sign and he's using a laser cutter and a 3d printer and it, originally he just started this less than a couple of years ago and he started putting them on Instagram and he's blown up. He's gotten really big, really fast. Yeah. But he just started taking and weathering these signs. And he did this sign at this show. He had four signs and two of them were not weathered at all. Uh -huh. One was slightly weathered, which was the circus liquor sign. And that was the very bottom pylons were kind of weathered. And then he had this moon motel sign that he weathered and he used chipping fluid and rust wash and, uh, um, like it's a blue base of the sign. So he put some lighter blue on it and he, he did the two sides actually different colors. So one looked like it was, uh, uh, like bleached in the sun and that sign people's jaws dropped. It is <laughs> fantastic, but he cool. weathered it and everybody was like, Oh my God, Look at that weathering. They were just blown away. It's like stuff we're kind of used to, right? Yeah. But the general yep. public aren't. And when yeah. they see something that really existed and it's uh -huh. weathered, oh my God, they <laughs> were going nuts. They cool. were, it was so neat. And it, his work's it's, awesome. He's really good. Yeah. If you, if you're listening and you haven't heard of him, his name's Chris Rayleigh and you look him up on a uh, route, R O U T E nine signs, all one word on Instagram. And yep. you're going to see some really, really cool stuff. He just so happens to be here in Fresno, which uh, just is a weird coincidence. But cool. it, it worked out good because we we uh, invited him to uh, take a little table in our booth. And he has went from he, – he has a, a, a son who has autism. And so Chris was very, you know, um, didn't have a lot of friends, right? He, he was always, you know uh, – uh, supporting his son and you know watching him and and but this model building has has got him out and now he's cool. got all these friends and like the entertainment industry and like <laughs> disney imagineers and these youtubers awesome. and it's really really cool and the guy's a super good guy so i would cool. definitely i would definitely check out his stuff because it's fantastic he's got a really i always tell people they should get on instagram yeah get on instagram and you know I hear this over and over, like, "Oh, well, it's hard, hard to get followers." Well, it is. Who, who? I'm cares? gonna say it is. <laughs> <laughs> who cares? <laughs> well, you know, yeah, just you know, get on there to get motivation to see what other people are doing. Yes, and yeah. I agree. I agree. The reason I say that it's hard to get followers is because I go on there to look look at things, but if I'm going to share my stuff, yeah. I want people to look at it, right? Sure. Um, and if it, it, it's not even really so much that I care so much about that, it's more like, I don't know why you'll see some, some, uh, Instagram sites that grow really fast. Yeah. And then, and, and I know it's all about content when you post it and all that, but then what's odd is the comparison between Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Some people, because of Instagram, it's still kind of, it's not obviously not new. Well, uh, but see, it grows faster. Yeah. Because Facebook, I can see what people you follow. I can see what you're commenting on. Right. And, and then people are like, people can almost follow you and, and almost copy what you're doing. Sure. Sure. To and grow that, their page. It's a, it's a little, it's, yeah, it's a little, scary if you think about yeah. it it's a lot yeah. scary but yep. at the same time it's interesting that you know there's a lot of things that t take off on instagram and but on facebook oh there's you know, it grow there's it, artists, my, my page grows like crazy but yeah on there's instagram, people on instagram that aren't even on facebook 
Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. I mean, I would say there's a lot of people on Instagram that aren't on Facebook. I yep. don't think it's so much the other way around. I would yeah. think that there, if you're on, on Facebook, you're probably on Instagram. Um, well, what's great about Instagram is if you're just following artists or modelers, that's all you see. Yeah. Where yep. on Facebook, you see seeing- whatever pictures of cats <laughs> you're seeing <laughs> well, it, and what food what food people are eating you know it's yeah you see all that stuff i would so. say but believe it or not this goes into a completely different conversation but <laughs> at the same time like tiktok is kind of like that too yeah, right yeah you know is that my dog that's your dog. What's up? With, what's, what's up with all these animals and things? And, uh, but, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. TikTok, no. it doesn't. It doesn't stay. Oh like, no! It, well, yeah, it's only it, it's completely different algorithms. Yeah. But there, if you're into like making things and watching things being made, you know, I I tried a few of them, and if like I did little quick little videos of me doing the the process of model making. Uh huh. You could see that would take off, right? But there's yeah. effort. There's quite a bit of effort. It's like you're doing your YouTube videos, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot of effort you got to put in because you, you to be catchy, you got to get different angles and blah blah blah. And and you know, if you really want to do it, I could see modeling taking off pretty big. And there are a ton of model sure. builders now on TikTok. It's not yep. just a bunch of kids. There's a lot of adults that watch TikTok videos. Um, yeah. But that's yep. more of like. A, things that are uh how do you say satisfying you know like it, watching cars get crushed or you know like people cooking yeah. food or you know yeah. um but it is weird how, how social media works it's also weird how uh you know how it's lent itself to this hobby you know yeah. Um, oh yeah it, it certainly opened anything that you want to learn you can just go on youtube and find it yeah, I mean, think about if you were a model rare order 25 years ago before the web, right? Yeah. You, you had your magazines and you had your books. You had yep. train shows and clubs. But they yeah. were all they were all available only at certain times unless you had books. But your books yeah. you'd read and then you were done. You know, model railroading with John Allen. I've had three of them. Uh, the Fabulous Franklin in South Manchester. I've had three yep. of them because I wore the things out. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now, anything you could possibly want like that is right there. It's right there. It's in real instant. time. In yep. real time. Yeah. And, um, but if I want to know something about military modeling, if I want to know something about, you know, RC cars, if I want to know about something about diorama building, uh -huh. it's right there. Yes. And that, that instant gratification is great. It's really bad in a lot of ways, but it's really good in a lot of ways mm -hmm. that, that we can learn about these other scales, these other types of model building, um, ship building, you know, like all the, the all the wood they use in those. And that's a whole, a whole <laughs> other area. Yes. That's related yep. yet completely yeah. different and really, really, yep. really hard to do. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a lot of that uh availability now, which is fantastic. It it really is. And you know, with my YouTube channel, I I'm just sharing what I know. And if it helps one person that watches a video, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not so worried about being a career YouTuber or like really growing the channel. Right. I'm just sharing my passion for what I do yeah. with others and, and hopefully other people get something out of it. it, it right. Yeah. And it, it just grows itself. Yeah. It just, it just, it oh, just does. I just, I love that so many people are following my channel now and I, I so appreciate it. I oh, just, it's, I, I love it. And there's so many people that, I mean, I, mean, I had, where was I at? And I, I think I was in Vegas and one of the guys I was working with, um, he doesn't know who I talked to or anything like that. I was talking about something about model trains. He goes, yeah, you should check out Jason Jensen trains. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know him. <laughs> yeah, um, that's it's funny that that's uh, yeah, it's you're, I mean, people know who you are, definitely. 
Um, so that that's very interesting, but I think it's helped out. There's a lot of people in probably a lot of different uh, hobbies that follow oh. what you do. Uh-huh. So I think that's pretty cool. I mean, uh, you know, you, you get up and then after, you know, kind of where you're at, you get up into that scale of uh, um, Boulder Creek, you know, and uh, uh, yeah. Oh my God. He's got like what, how many yeah. million, million oh, subscribers Luke, or something? Luke Town, Luke Town. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that's like millions. Yeah. Completely different level of that's when, you know, yep. you actually make a little bit of money off YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. No, you say it's still not making that much, but you know, you're, you're, yeah. you know, you, yep. you are uh, able to kind of fund your, your own videos and get real camera equipment and things like that. Yeah. So, yep. Definitely. Um, so, but then you got to have like assistant. You got to come up with new ideas. Oh, and, and, oh yeah. You know, it's like it's it one be, thing. It a, becomes a business. Then it becomes a business. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of businesses and <laughs> things oh. like that. Um, <laughs> so I watched your latest video, and uh, you uh, just magically built a new part of a layout, which is <laughs> pretty awesome. <laughs> In three and a half days. In three and a half days. Um, my wife thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, and she she should. Uh, uh, it's it's. A, I kind of want to mention what's going on here too, um, but uh, and you did that because you are going to uh, you need room for your laser because there is going to be yeah. a Jason Jensen Trains Kit Company. That's right. That's what I yep. heard at least. Right. Yeah. Yep. So that that could be pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not trying to really compete with anyone. I'm just going to no. put out a few kits here and there, um, and it's going to be, you know, just sort of whatever I create in my head. Yes. Um, and yes. hopefully people like it. I <laughs> so. and, and it's going to be it's going to be different because yeah. you know people go, oh man, Jason Jensen, he's going to he's going to do this, and people aren't going, but it. It's going to be different because remember, guys, Jason builds a lot of kits. Yeah. Right. Yep. Now he's designed quite a few kits, but these are going to be all have having to be designed by Jason. Right. Yeah. So yep. it's gonna it's gonna be a completely well. Different... It'll it'll just have my own style. Yeah. You know. Um. So. Well, I think the world's ready for it. I think it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> cool. I can't wait. Thanks. It's be cool. I might even I might even build one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's but cool. man, I'm so excited now too about the the expansion on the layout because you know a big thrill for me is seeing trains run continuously. Just yeah. sitting back and watching trains run, not having and, to worry about operating, just kind of yeah, watching them. And, run and I think it goes back to when I was a little kid watching my grandpa going to my grandpa's house and watching his trains on his layout just sure. run and sure. i would just sit there forever watching those trains going i loved it oh it's so cool i mean so. you said you said something very interesting because you took you had started building that little part of the layout off on the other side yeah and you yep. had introduced some like modular rolling modular pieces yes. um and you started talking about that and i was like man yep. this is this is awesome this is <laughs> creativity like nobody does this kind of stuff this is this is awesome yeah um you you're kind of going back to a traditional layout but you said something when you kind of showed the site plan that you were going to roll up the hillside kind of like franklin yeah and that was super exciting because i'm looking at your layout going that whole it's it's this is very rarely done, but pretty much that whole thing is going to be city. Yeah. Right. Yep. And it's going to be, I love Franklin. Franklin With is one loop of track. That's it. But that's okay. Yeah. Franklin to me, when, when I first saw that, and I don't remember what year it was that came I don't know, like, like 97 or something. That's when he first did that. Right. That was genius. For model yes. building because it is <laughs> yeah you don't see a lot of these big wide pieces of bench work that's kind i don't want to say frowned upon but it's not because it's hard to get to stuff right yeah yeah yep but i i can only assume he worked from the top and worked forward right uh-huh yep 
But that scene that it created is one of the best scenes in model railroading that there has ever been. In my <laughs> I opinion. agree. It I is agree. so it sets the scene. It sets the mood. Yep. It feels right. The colors are perfect. Everything on it is 100 yeah. percent excellent. Right. Yep. Um, I think I also really like it because he never really messed with it. Right. Uh -huh. It wasn't like Manchester and, and um, uh, South Manchester where he had the big buildings, which I loved. I loved how busy it was. I loved all the trash. I loved all the people. I like love the huge buildings. He kind of took that out. I was kind of like, that's what I loved about that layout in the first place. <laughs> right. Because it was so different than everything else. It, uh, but he's able to to have Franklin and have that look and feel. And he, it, it was the start of his smaller buildings, his smaller wood buildings being incorporated mm -hmm. into everything. Yeah. But it still has that massive feel because he's going up that hill. Uh huh. Yep. And that is so unique that he was able to pull that off mm -hmm. because it's such a big area, but it's gorgeous. And when you said that you wanted to do something like that, I was like, <laughs> yeah, that is yeah. cool. I mean, that's what I yep. was uh, thinking about here on the, on the dirt spot is I don't have the kind of room to do that, but I wanted to do that hill kind of thing where it goes up. Uh -huh. I really wanted to be able to have different streets going. In. I just don't have the room to do it. Um, yeah, but you're still you're fooling the eye, yeah, or you're, you're totally tricking the viewer by um, how you're placing structures, and you're making it look bigger than what it, it actually looks is. way bigger than what it is. I mean, yeah, I I, so. I uh, certainly have taken some pictures, and I tell people, yeah, that's you know a foot and a half deep, and they're just like, what? <laughs> I mean, you can yeah. tell in a lot of pictures, but there's certain pictures where you can't. Yep. But um, one thing I'm going to do, and I haven't talked about this yet really online, is I am getting ready to build my, I guess you could say workshop or shed in, in the backyard. And that is going to either be a small kind of caricature copy of Walt Disney's Carolwood Barn um, that is... Um, where Walt had his ride on scale trains where mm -hmm. he worked on them at his house on Carrollwood in Bel Air or, um, and that kind of looks like a standard barn, but I have some really cute ideas for it. But he also had, there was a playhouse he made for his daughters at his second home, his actual second house in, in LA and it's a very the very first caricature building he ever made. It was like the first Disneyland he ever did. It was the very first attempt at a physical Disneyland. Uh, and it was very cool, fantasy, kind of European style playhouse. And I might make that. I showed that to my girls and they and my wife, and they just loved it. So <laughs> I might make that and put my railroad in this. So this railroad that's back here that's supposed to be 12 foot wide is going to be moved into that so and, and what size it's going to be 12 foot by 12 foot okay so so it's going to be you know size of a bedroomy kind of size yeah. which is a lot better than what i have going on now which I'm in, the, I'm in my garage i work with my garage door open all the time I have to deal with all the mosquitoes and the heat and blah 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 i can insulate the, this playhouse or whatever i want to do i can finally put in my pot-bellied stove that i've wanted to have <laughs> cool. in a workshop forever yeah. uh, but what i've done is i just added this this rack up here this rack and uh -huh. that area is supposed to be the swamp which is burl Oh, but okay. I decided okay. since I'm going to move the layout, I'm not going to build this thing all 12 feet of it and then move it. I'm going to kind of finish off the Bergen side of things. Oh, okay. It's still going to yeah. be hard to move uh, because I've mounted stuff to the walls and whatnot. I'm going <laughs> to take that off. I'm going to repaint my backdrop. I'm going to do all which is cool because I like this backdrop, but I think it could be a lot better. Um, I'm going to put a new backdrop inside the workshop with uh, the railroad in there. And then I'm probably going to not just have a 12 foot piece. I'm probably going to add another extension 
to make, uh, I, I really have this, I keep seeing this viaduct going across kind of like some uh, really low lying islands and mm -hmm. where it goes out to the deep water port where they oh, would yeah, bring, yeah. bring the fish to. So I want to have a viaduct going across Bergen Harbor, going over to the swamps of Burl, but then I want to continue that viaduct out to a port. So I'm, uh, and, and it'll allow me to run the trains a little bit longer too. Okay. Uh, so that's what I'm working on. Um, I'm going to, I need to get an N scale, some kind of N scale locomotive that I can confer over to HON 30. Um, there's some really neat HON 30 locomotives out there. Do you think you'd ever but, consider doing a, a lift out section so that you could run a train continuously around the room? Yeah. So there's a couple things I was thinking about that the, possi the possibility of if this, if this bench works pretty high already, but if the uh, bench work was a little higher, I could put my, you could see kind of how my workbench is underneath it right here. Yeah. I could do something like that and have my workbench completely, completely underneath the layout. And I could probably wrap the layout all the way around the room. Yeah. So that's a thought. So maybe something like that in the near future. I do have a, uh, an acquaintance who runs a good size YouTube tube channel that's related to Disney that would like to cover me building that thing. Ah, cool. So that, because there really hasn't been a, a you know, replica of either of those things. So um, at least in the scale that I want to do it in. Yeah. So I think that would be kind of fun. I think it's so fun too, getting creative with what little space we have yeah. with storage and yep. and work areas and where you're storing tools and wood and um it's just it's fun to come up with well with, and that uh, that's how that's to store one, all that you know professionally that that kind of shed or whatever that's that's kind of what i do in my daily life uh -huh. so i know i could come up with some kind of crazy cool design right i'm i'm super excited about that yeah um but exactly what you're saying be it some kind of loft to store things in, be it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe a lower area where the, where the workbench is. I can do that yeah. here. I'm in my garage and it's my garage, right? Yeah. This is, we have to park <laughs> yeah. cars in here. It's, it's, there's and bikes I, and, <laughs> and I, and I work with the garage door open all the time. So it's either really hot or really cold or full of mosquitoes or, yeah. and people walking in the neighborhood, I love them to death, but they love to <laughs> come up and say, Hey, what is that you're building there? And they just scare the heck out of me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's just like our random kids will come yeah. in and, and it's, it's, you know, back there, I'm just kind of people yeah. that want to come talk to me. They know where to come find me yeah. and I'm kind of, and I'll have a window yeah. in front of me so I can see outside, you know, and that's, <laughs> yeah. I won't have my garage door open all the time for the whole yeah. world to see everything in here. So I think that'll be really fun. But once again, that's kind of stepping out of my comfort zone, which is here. Sure. I'm like, oh God, I gotta move this. And you know, but <laughs> I think in the long run, it's gonna be a lot better. So uh, kind of uh, like what you just did, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Man, it killed me to take down that section that I'd been working so long on. You know, because that I saw it in my head. I saw the finished product in my head. I knew what that was gonna look like. And I was so excited for you to start on the scenery. Oh, I we're know. so close to the scene. Yep. And it's all gone. And but you got to start all over again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but that's good. It's good. No, it's, it totally, totally. It's fine because yeah. I'm sure you got some other ideas where you're going, mm, I, oh. you know, maybe I want to do this now. Yeah. But that yeah. Franklin thing, mm -hmm, yeah. I'm liking that. Yep. I think that could be really spectacular. Cool. It's so exciting. It just is. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just modeling in general is just so exciting. Yep. Yeah, it is. Uh, there's just so many projects that I want to do. I agree. I did. I started one was it yesterday. Maybe it was this morning. I don't know. But, you know, I, I've always had the story about how these people, they're very destitute on this island. Right. So I started building a homeless encampment up on top of one of the buildings. And I was just <laughs> so excited to do it. It's so cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. So there's all these pallets and they built like, you know, it's, it's yep. very grungy and, and run down, but it adds a lot of detail, you know, yeah. and I'm working on these little small scenes because I'm, 
I'm, what I'm doing is I'm trying trying to start from the back and work my way forward. So I have a little bit more area um, where I have to get along the back and then I can start putting my uh, buildings I've already built up in place. But once those are done, it's going to be getting pretty close to being done. Mm -hmm. So I have this weird idea. I'm going to take my Foz scale um, Atlas Gorge building uh -huh. and I'm going to take the Dremel to it. Okay. And I'm going to cut it right down the middle and I'm going to open it up like a book. Oh. And I think it's going to be pretty cool. So that's one thing. I'm not really concerned about doing stuff like that. Uh, yeah. It's a really cool building, but it kind of doesn't fit like I thought it was going to. Okay. So now I'm going to kind of cut it up. And yeah, it's gonna, I'm pretty excited about it. But I got to <laughs> slowly got to take my time. I can't start on that before I finish this. Otherwise, I'm going to trap myself and not be able to work on other yeah. things. So yep. um, the, the I really have to work from the back forward on this railroad, which most people do. But because it's all basically buildings, uh -huh. um, it's it's a little bit more complex. It's not yeah. like I have forests and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, I'm I'm pretty excited. It's going to be fun. But uh, cool. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, I, I think until we get more into these kits, these uh, 135th scale kits and really get going, we kind of have an idea what we want to do. Yeah. Um, and I think everybody that's listening knows that we're we're doing this. It'll be fun. Um, it's going to be fun to take a bunch yep. of pictures and, and post all the stuff we're doing on it. And you're going to be doing a video, which is. Well, I think it's going to be so fun for me to finally actually do um something that well, i've been watching in all the ammo videos yeah right because right. at this point i'm trying to take what i see in the ammo videos and then apply it to ho scale where yes. now i can do, i can actually see, apply it to how exactly. they're showing it yeah yep. <laughs> so. but it's going to what it's going to do is it's going to open your eyes and say okay now i can do it like this in ho scale yes um, exactly it, it's it is definitely you're probably going to want to do more plasticky metal looking things <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah so anyway um that, that i think is probably going to wrap it up for today unless you got anything else you want to uh, uh, i would just uh i hope that people listening challenge themselves and try a different scale just one thing yeah you know yeah, I, I agree. I think I think that just trying something else, heck, you could even do it where you're using it on your existing layout. Maybe you're doing a forced perspective piece, yeah. right? You do something bigger and put it up front or something smaller and put it in the back or, you know. Um, well, I'll give you a great example. Yeah. Jake Johnson, who has done ho scale forever is now doing n scale and the guy's killing it he's oh just, yeah it's awesome yeah no that's he's doing that for his job he's doing uh yeah. he's doing like stop motion stuff uh, yep. because he works for an effects company and he's doing uh n scale stuff and it's like he he sends me pictures and says man this stuff is really small <laughs> yeah. yeah it's really small but man he's really uh oh, it's, it's stuff looks yeah. fantastic yeah, it looks fantastic it's really and it's it's actually really hard to believe it's in scale because yep. it looks so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, there's people now modeling in that. What is that little T scale? That yeah. little, little, little scale, which is kind of cool too in a weird <laughs> way. But man, those things are like that. I mean, I thought Z scale yeah. was small. This stuff's half the size of Z scale. It's crazy. Man. But uh, you could have a pretty awesome layout, though, must say, in a very, very small oh, area. Yeah. yeah. You may not be able to see to re-rail the trains or um, <laughs> you can't right. do people because they're like <laughs> yeah. pieces of dust, but you know. Um, anyway, so I mean, that that's about it. I, I agree. I think that people, um, they get anything out of this. It's like, let's uh, try, try a different scale just for the heck of it. And you I know. know someday I will definitely try O scale because I just... Oh. Think I've it's done incredible. I've done a lot of O N thirty stuff, and yeah, and yeah, I just love it. I love I, the biggest bummer about O N thirty is that Bachman doesn't do any of their stuff anymore, and oh. that was what was so cool, man. Bachman, like two thousand three, two thousand four, you know, they were coming out with, oh god, all these cool locomotives and cars, and now it's like, 
you can't get them. You have to buy them off of eBay. Um, and the stuff was so cool. I don't know why they let it go because there were so many people doing it. Mm-hmm. And it was so fun to work in. And uh, they just stopped. I mean, there's some yeah. stuff, but not like there was. And uh, that, that was that was really, really exciting because the, o, the ON30 people tend to be some superb modelers. I mean, just the stuff is just gorgeous. And it's so whimsical and they have short little locomotives and it's so wacky and backwoodsy. And <laughs> I, I, I really love it. I really love it. If, if this wasn't, if I wasn't going to do HO here, this would have definitely been ON30. Absolutely. Yeah. I just don't yeah. have the room for it. Um, if I would have had the room for it, it would have been ON30. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Well, hopefully people listening get adventurous <laughs> and try something new. They will. I bet they will. Yeah, totally. We got it here. Hold on. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh yeah. Uh. We got to be start adventurous. With this like, like dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Indy, right there. One of my favorite characters Indy ever. Being of adventurous. All time. That brings me into the whole thing about industrial light and magic and model. Oh magic. gosh. Yeah. Oh my God. That whole other world. I mean, I, yeah. I held the camera in my hands that they filmed the mine scene with in Temple of Doom. Wow. I had that in my hands. That's how, oh God. <laughs> I mean, That's cool. Right there. It was a Nikon F3, I think. Oh, just, oh my God. So cool. That's a whole nother podcast of all the, the right. stuff we've been around, but Anyway, guys, um, thank you very much for tuning in. If you are one of the 46 people that listen to this. <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> thank you all thank so you. much. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we will see you all online. We got uh, Jason Jensen trains on all the socials, Instagram, <laughs> yes. Facebook, YouTube, Kit Twitter, Company, Twitter, everything. You have a Twitter? <laughs> I do. Hey, Twitter. Do you ever use it? Yeah, I use okay. it well, at least once a month. It's just for advertising, basically. Sure, sure totally. Um, no. and, and then you got me, who is all over the board, where I got Nerdspot.7 yep. on Facebook, James.A.Powell on uh, Instagram. We got uh, Dirtspot.7 on TikTok. It's whatever. Um, <laughs> one day I'll consolidate all the names. Anyway, guys, thank you for listening, and we will talk to you soon. Goodbye. Happy modeling. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.